What is up everyone? It's David. Welcome back to Gem Mint MTG. So today I just want to kind of flip on the mic and talk about grading newer cards. It's a controversial subject that comes up uh, every now and then and I I still see people in 2023 really poo-pooing the idea of grading newer cards, um, putting people down because they choose to do that. And I, I don't like the negativity, and I think it's ill-founded, and I think that it's uh, much more constructive to spread a, spread a better message about the subject. So let's talk about it. Uh, if you appreciate content like this, oh, there goes all my slabs for the video. <laughs> If you appreciate content like this, I'd appreciate your subscription to this channel. It's the best way to support this channel with just the click of a button. Almost at 1,100 subs. So hit that subscribe button and join in the fun. Okay, so uh, somebody came on to the Facebook groups, which if you're not already a member of the Graded Magic the Gathering Facebook groups, what are you doing? If you're watching this channel and you're not already a member, Go join the Facebook groups. They're a great way to connect with people who collect graded cards. Um, I'm on there all the time, checking stuff out, buying, selling. It's a really good community. But, you know, subjects come up and people are free to share their opinion. And uh, somebody posted a, um, somebody posted a, I don't want to be too specific because I don't want to talk about any individual names or anything, but basically, Somebody posted a picture of a newer card that was uh, graded, and they said, "Hey, you know, what kind of, what do you think this card is worth?" And there was a response to that comment, the most upvoted comment of that um, of that post was, "There's no premium for this card, and there's no premium for anything new." unless it's a 9.5 or it's a sought after card. And that one response kind of, to me, sums up what a lot of people think about grading newer cards. Okay, so basically whenever it comes up about grading a card that's not a vintage card, basically the response from a lot of people is, there's no premium for graded cards unless the card is old or it's sought after. And my problem with that argument is that both of those qualifications are extremely subjective. And depending on the person, you could define those two things completely differently. There are a lot of people who are into grading things that I would consider old and sought after that I have no interest in owning. I would not put a premium on those cards. I have no interest in doing it. And that's my personal opinion. I don't I don't go around saying no, you shouldn't you shouldn't buy, sell, or grade, you know, anything from Portal Three Kingdoms in 8.5 or 9 condition. Because that's just not my cup of tea, but there's a lot of people who do enjoy Portal Three Kingdoms, and they would happily purchase a card that they need for their collection of that for, you know, in nine condition and pay a premium for it. And who am I to say, no, the grading those cards are, is dumb. And, you know, the, the definition of old is is so subjective. Like, if you if you consider how long magic has been around since 1993 all the way to 2023 that's 30 years and in those 30 years people have started playing basically from that whole time span you know for somebody who started in 1993 or 1994 yeah an old card is going to be you know an old card probably from somewhere between 1993 to maybe 96 97 98 but what if you just started playing a couple years ago you know, cards from 2017, 2018, those cards are years old before you started playing. You have to go back to see them. You don't see them in the, you know, the content that you're watching, you know, these days with, with set releases and stuff like that. You have to go back and seek out those cards. And even though for, for you or I, they may, they may be a far cry from a vintage card, for somebody who just started, they might see a card from, from 2012 or 2016 
as you know a vintage card that's 10 or 15 years old it hasn't been reprinted in forever you know was is now no longer available in that border or that treatment or something and so to just kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater and say oh you shouldn't grade anything unless it's old like old is so subjective i have cards i've got a few things in front of me that i thought kind of represent this this idea pretty well i've got cards all the way from 2016 and 2004 actually fifth dawn foil fifth dawn crucible of worlds 2004 is that old it's does sure as heck isn't new um 2016 kaladesh inventions is that old i don't know it's seven years old it's not that old but it's not that new you know 2018, Dominaria, 9.5 foil quad mox amber. Was this not worth grading? I I thought it was. I thought it was a cool card. I think there should be a big premium for a card like this, even in nine condition. <laughs> you know, and here's here's a card from 2021. The uh the foil etched special uh Japanese artwork time warp. Super cool. Super cool card in nine condition. Did I pay a premium for this card? Absolutely. I paid a good premium for this card because I wanted it in graded condition and I felt like it was worth it. And the, the list just goes on. Here's a extended art foil uh, Great Henge from 2019. Throne of Eldraine, the first collector box. Is this an old card? Is this a sought after card? There's a lot of people who would say absolutely not they have no interest in collecting this card you know if you're a vintage collector yeah sure something like this to you is not old and is certainly not sought after you're not a player you don't use these cards they have no utility to you you have no history with the card but i love this card i use it in a ton of my decks i think the artwork is amazing the extended art foil is extremely hard to get these are two three hundred bucks raw and the idea that I would not have somebody pay a premium for this nine quad plus plus extended art foil great henge just because, oh, it's from 2019 and somebody doesn't consider that old. It just doesn't make any sense. So like the, the so that's so that's the first part of it is defining what is old is extremely subjective. And a card from 2004, you know, some, a vintage collector might not consider this an old card. It's a 20 year old card. I, I think it's, I think it's old and it's irrelevant. It, it, it's irrelevant because there's, there's people starting and starting playing magic all the time. And what's old to you is not old to somebody else. So these like blanket statements about, oh, don't grade it unless it's old. There's a lot of old cards that shouldn't be graded in my opinion that are, that don't carry a premium either. And, um, the other, the other side of it is something that's sought after. And as if old wasn't subjective enough, <laughs> how on earth do you define what is sought after? Like, or what you think, or what's cool? Oh, no, only grade, like, really cool sought after cards. Like, that's the most subjective thing <laughs> you could possibly say. Like, I, I, like I said, this, this is a great example. I think this is, extre this is an extremely cool card that is sought after to me i i sought it out <laughs> i sought after this card it's not a very expensive card but the artwork is just amazing and i i paid a premium for it happily and a lot of people could look at this and say oh no that's not sought after i don't i i don't think that's a sought after card okay well that's your opinion <laughs> and um you know what what is sought after to you may not be sought after to somebody else and what someone else would sought after would seek out you know maybe of no interest to you and it's extremely subjective i mean there's people who who like to collect all kinds of stuff new stuff older stuff and this idea that we should just completely exclude and like shun people like publicly shun people for expressing interest in buying, selling, and grading newer cards that may or may not be sought after 
is not a good look. It spreads a bad message, like for the community. Like, I, I want graded cards and grading magic cards to grow and thrive and and like this community to increase in size. And when you like discourage people publicly from participating in the grading process, most likely their very first experience with grading is sending in these cards that you know you say they're new and they're not sought after. And to just have like, you know, people from these from the group come in and say, yeah, no, this is dumb. There's no premium for that card. Don't even bother grading it. It's like, why? Just, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Or just like really think about what you're saying and think about, do you actually mean that? Like, do, do you really mean that this person is wasting their time and money, um, you know, participating in graded cards because they choose to grade this card and it's not one that you particularly think is worth grading. And I think if you do that, just like, you know, you do with anything else, sit down and think about it from the other perspective. You know, you don't know who's on the other side of that screen. And if you want people to join this community and feel welcome and for there to be a healthy future for grading magic cards, like things have to progress. It, 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 in my opinion, it can't and it shouldn't be, oh no, only super high-end vintage cards are worth grading. And that's all anybody is ever going to have an interest in. And that's all that you should seek out. And the only cards that you should grade are the old vintage cards and only the ones in really, really, really good condition and 9.5 or better. It's like times are changing. The those vintage cards are gone. Like, he ask yourself if you're, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, if, you know, the people who, who are making those comments happen to watch these videos, but for everybody, think about how, when is the last time you were able to find really, really nice vintage raws that you sent in for grading and like were happy, came back good grades and you felt like you absolutely got your money's worth like, it is so hard now. Like, I struggle, struggle. Like, I still, like, I try to find cards with good high-res photos, pick them up for grading, and it's, like, it's becoming, like, needle in the haystack, diamond in the rough, finding these vintage cards in grade-worthy condition. There's no more packs to open. Like, yeah, if you want to spend, like, absurd amounts of money on you know, unopened packs, vintage packs, like, sure, all the more power to you, but the vast majority of people are not going to be able to do that. And, you know, every other, every other collecting category in terms of cards, they grade newer cards, whether it's Pokemon, Flesh and Blood, uh, Basketball, you know, MetaZoo, or uh, Baseball, like, New, new, new sets come out. People grade these cards. There's a following for them. There's a big community of people buying, selling, and trading them. And magic should be the same way. You should be able to buy the latest collector booster box. And if you pull an awesome extended art foil, whatever the hell it is, <laughs> you know, th there should be no, no, um, nothing wrong with with grading that card and chances are as things progress and time goes on those cards are going to find a home if we if we kind of foster you know this this type of direction and um yeah so it's it's just something that i've thought about something that i wanted to get out there if you're if you're a newer graded collector and you've heard this kind of stuff about only grading old vintage cards it's not true it, it you probably We'll hear that from people who are, you know, high-end vintage collectors, people who maybe don't have an interest in the newer cards, but there's a lot of people who don't see it that way, myself included. I have in front of me a dozen, <laughs> I was planning on like showing all these and talking about them, but it, whatever, it doesn't matter. I've got about a dozen cards, all printed in the last five years here, in, in 9 or 9.5 condition that 
I paid a premium for or I graded myself because I thought that they were really cool and I thought that they were worth grading and I wanted them to be in my collection that also has vintage high-end cards. And um, yeah, so anyway, I think it's a great way to get integrated collecting too because like I said, these, these vintage raws are getting extremely hard to find. And, you know, being able to find, you know, pack fresh cards printed in the last few years and grading them is, is a lot easier than trying to find, like, you know, your favorite card from Arabia Nights that you want to get graded. Like, good luck with that. It's, it's getting to be almost impossible to find those kinds of cards in the wild. So... Anyway, uh, that's what I got for today. I thought it was a subject that, you know, we kind of talk about here and there. It comes up and it's like part of a larger discussion. But I just wanted to kind of sit down and, and really iron out my, my opinions on this. And, you know, in the end, what is sought after, what is old, is going to vary person to person. And, you know, we should really encourage people to participate in the grading process and the graded community. And I don't think it's, you know, a healthy thing to like, you know, publicly shun somebody for, for, or, you know, kind of laugh at them for, you know, expressing interest in a graded card that maybe isn't your cup of tea, because if they're asking about it, clearly it's theirs. And, uh, yeah, you know, we should welcome everybody into this and try to try to grow the community. You know, we want a good future and for people to uh, to have opportunities to grade cards of their own. OK, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you just listened to me rant about graded cards for the last 20 minutes and you're not already a subscriber here, hit that subscribe button and join in the fun. We're almost at 1100 subscribers. I got the BGS mission coming back. Five awesome cards. And uh, hopefully that submission went well. I'm going to do a video review when it comes back. Hopefully it's in the next week or so. All right. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my weekend. I hope you're having a good one out there. Till next time, have a great one.